talking about is how we cope and what? like with daily struggles so happiness is an inside job I'm, I'm pretty sure we talked about this and touched base on this in other episodes and how we internally take care of ourselves and make happiness our priority and to make ourselves happy mm -hmm. so Renika how do you take this so for me when I am let's say maybe having a down day one of the things that I use to kind of either bring brightness back in after those challenging times I try to take you know just a second to think about the good things that are happening right like what are some positives that's happened in the day or the week or whatever the case is because at the end of the day you really want to make sure that you're seeing it as a great day because like when I end my day I'm like okay today was a good day and it's because you're looking at some of the positives it's not going to be like a everything is sunshiny and peachy all day no you're going to have some bumps that goes through the day but at the end of the day there's still some positives that you can look back at and say okay i, I had a pretty good day or i had a pretty good whatever the case is but it's really taking that time to find those little pockets of joy so that you can really kind of hone in on those so Absolutely. You want to talk about the inspiration to this episode? So this insp this episode was inspired by a book that we all read together. Um, mm -hmm. A very enlightening book, I feel, um, on happiness. And the title of the book is called Happiness is an Inside Job by Celia Bornstein. Um, there were a lot of mixed reviews about the book mm -hmm. from <laughs> all of us, <laughs> ranging from the book was great to if you want to go to sleep, go ahead and read that book. Um, <laughs> sleep is always necessary, though. Yes, yeah, sleep, sleep, sleep is ever written. <laughs> sleep is always Sorry. necessary. Sorry, Absolutely. Sylvia. Sorry, Sylvia. Sorry. The message was great. And yes. we will all agree with that collectively, yes. that the we could collectively hang our hats on happiness as an inside job, which inspired, your book actually inspired this chat with us. So mm -hmm. um, we want to um, just kind of share some of the um, things that we've come up with as a group on how we prioritize our happiness from the inside out. Mm -hmm. um, so, our takeaway. Our takeaway from the whole thing, right? Yes. Like, what are what did we take away from it that we would want to share with you? How we prioritize happiness because happiness is definitely starts on the inside. Yeah. Um, it's not something that's external where we have to go out and look for it. It starts inside first. So I actually read a book that was called like from the inside out. It was parenting from the inside out where basically where you have to heal yourself. And I think that's really what the book, like the premise of the book is healing yourself so that you can find genuine happiness. Like there's a lot of pseudo happiness that's going on um, right now, like just um, taking a look at the outside. Ooh, she looks together. Ooh, mm -hmm. he's this, he's that from the outside, but on the inside, you're crumbling. Like, no one knows. Like, placebo effect. Placebo effect. Yes. And, and, and then, like, you hear, and this is kind of deep, but I'm going to say this and I'm going to ask a question. You could, um, like, you hear people who seemingly have everything together mm -hmm. on the outside. Mm -hmm. They're successful, they have this amazing family, but then they go and they commit suicide right so obviously mm -hmm. what was projecting on the outside was not a reflection of what was on the inside right mm -hmm. so i just kind of want to throw want to throw that in there 
Let's move on. I'm gonna. Well, add I will. I, I do want to say this, as you mentioned, suicide. It, like, if you or somebody else, you know, is you know having issues and struggling, thinking, yeah, struggling, and and suicidal thoughts or anything, there are a lot of resources available, and we certainly want to ensure that we put that in yeah, there. We're gonna include that at, at the end of the. Segment. That's right. Please, you know, seek help because. It is not to be taken lightly. No. It is something that is very serious. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. So, Kim, we have some, a few questions for you all about how do we prioritize happiness? So, um, mm. we're going to start with Radhika. What are some ways? <laughs> She's like, did I just not know, guys? I'm going to cut the table. You can say cut the table. Absolutely. We can. Pass it on. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 Question. Hit me one. The question is, and I'm going to go ahead and hot potato. <laughs> <over to me. laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just like put myself in the spot. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to hot potato it over to Lana. Okay. What do you do or how do you boost your happiness from the inside out? Mm. That's, a, That's a great question. <laughs> That's a great question. Um, actually, uh, the I paint. I'm just going to. Nice. I didn't I, know that about you. Um, I She's painted as young. I painted as a kid, and then you know life happened. You know kids, family. You know work, money, blah 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 blah. And about five years ago, I just picked, just went and got supplies and start painting. And so I paint. And I also sleep. There's two things I do because sometimes you just don't have. It. I mean, painting is like a little bit of a process. You kind of build something up, and you, you, you know, then you feel like you, you're ready to like let it out. So you go, you get your canvas, or you get your paper, or you get your paints, pencils, mark, whatever. You get your medium, and then you go into this like space where you zone mm -hmm. out. So it's kind of a meditation, and you yes. just work until you feel like you're done. Okay. And it can be an hour, or it can be several days, or it can be several months where you like exist in the process, and you're happy. Mm -hmm. And it helps everything else that you do in your life. It's project the happiness projects into your life. Sometimes you just have something, maybe it's an email that came that triggered you from somebody mm -hmm. in your work process, or it may be somebody who is close to you in your personal circle or something. Mm -hmm. You just can't. Okay. And not today. That's and you're not going to deal. Yes. And so when that happens to me, I go home and I sleep. Okay. That's great. And next day I'm probably ready to deal with it. And if I'm not, I will do it. I'll give it a shot next day. I'm not going to stress myself out, or out over you. I'm just telling you. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Mom. Just, that's that's great. absolutely wonderful. So Lana paints and she prioritizes sleep as a way to project happiness from the inside out. Okay. I'm going to throw this question at you. Um, I, when I'm feeling my biggest mood booster is music. Okay. Yes. I will put my headphones in and I turn it up as loud as I can, mm -hmm. which I know I'm probably going to be deaf <laughs> at an early age, That's okay. but I have to drown everything else out and it just, it lifts me up. And whether it's angry music or happy music, it just, it allows me to feel my feelings and process them and kind of push through them. That was going to be my next yeah. question to you. So what song do you put on to put you in a happy mood? Like if you're feeling down, what song is it that you jam? It depends on the day. Give me one right song. Right now, today, it would probably be Numb. Numb? Mm. Yes. Okay. Okay. I love that. I'm loving that song Numb. Right now. Okay, so I'm now I'm gonna have to go and re-listen to the song mm -hmm. "Numb" to see. So it when you're here, it brings you up here. Yes, it's okay. just got a very it's fun, it's happy. You know, it's just it's a good tune. Okay, I've never actually heard okay. that song. Neither have well, I. So see. now during the break, we added we're it to the to... playlist. Oh, oh. oh, no, you added it to the playlist. Oh, 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 oh I did. Yeah. Maybe I just don't know the name of it. I recommend okay. it. Okay, you, you did. Okay. And then y'all sent us the playlist. And told us Guys, we have a fire playlist that we're going to also include. 
so that you all can hear what we're talking about. Okay. You're going to love it. Karee, I'm going to mm -hmm. ask you the question. What are, what are some <laughs> things that you do? <laughs> and I'm fixing my crown. Yes. By is. the way, you can fix your crown for your happiness Absolutely. too. It's just like, like, let's get it straight. <laughs> Absolutely. So the question is, what do you do to boost your confidence from the inside out? My happiness or my confidence? Happiness. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a lot of different things. Okay. First and foremost, you have to laugh about things. Okay. Yes. Like even just our discussion here today, you guys probably realize we're a little giggly and it's okay. I mean, <laughs> This episode it's like, especially. This episode is special, <laughs> especially. Uh, but I will say this. Sometimes you just have to laugh to stop from crying. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so some days I'm just like, you know, we're not even going to go there, like Lana said, but I'm just going to laugh. And then everybody looks at me like, what is wrong with you? It's okay. That's, that's, that's my coping mechanism. Um, but I think that there are a few things. One, I like white sheets. I like comfy bed. Everybody thinks I'm OCD, it's okay. I've, I've come to really just walk into that. I consider that organized comfort, that caught to me, OCD. Oh, okay. okay, so I like white sheets and I know that. So in the morning when I get up, ma, I make my bed, white sheets, white comforter, white pillow. I spray them, I smell them, it makes me feel good. Because even if I'm having a shitty day, and the morning can start with a shitty day because you may wake up going, oh crap, I forgot to do something yesterday. Like I forgot to pay a credit card and now they're gonna give me a late fee grant, right? Like, or oh crap, you know, man, today's gonna be a heck, heck of a day and I'm, I snooze too long and so now it's gonna be crappy. So I like that. I like doing um, that ritual in the morning. It gets me into a nice place because it also reminds me of being in a space a travel space, you know, if you imagine going, you know, to your, your, your highest five star um, hotel and it's just relaxing. Yeah. So it sets the mood. It, it immediately rechannels my energy into one of just calmness, freshness, and just pure whiteness. Yeah. Um, I love music, but I think for me, the biggest thing for happiness is I am a self actualizer and I self swing. So I talk to myself a lot. And I always look at the glass half empty. I'm sorry, half full instead of half empty. So it's mindset. A lot of times that's just rechanneling the energy. And those are the things that just keeps me in a space where I can practice gratitude. Yes. Because that's big. You can see everything wrong. Trust me, you will be able to see everything wrong. But then you can also see so many things Absolutely. that are right. And you can swing. So the idea of happiness being an inside job is you have certain mechanisms that you can look at things in a different way. And you can use just the smallest things to change Absolutely. or reach on a level of feel. Thank yeah. you. That's, that, that's great. That's great. Um, so, Radhika, have you answered this question? Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. So I'm going to throw it to Kim to, to answer this question and then I'm going to answer it and then we'll go on to the next one. Okay. So we were talking about what do you do? to make boost. myself happy yes. and boost my happiness from the inside okay, so, out. um music is a big thing in my house as well but i also love to go sit down and read a good romance novel y'all can judge me if you will i think your white sheets are your blank slate in the morning okay throwing on a romance novel on audible it mm. just you know it just gets that lovey-dovey, great happiness vibes for the day, and most of mine have some kind of a murder mystery. <laughs> well, I do always have a man in my bed. <laughs> my husband's very good to me in that way. But that's another thing with me as well. When I'm really, like the day's really grinding on my nerves, and I know sometimes I don't always channel it in the correct way as well. Um, sometimes I think it comes off, um, it can come off a little harshly when I'm really frustrated with the day and I call him to vent. And it's not mm. even necessarily that I'm calling to vent at him. It's that he is very um, calming and soothing to me. Mm. Even when he takes what I'm saying harshly, he's, he tries to not get offensive or defensive about it and tries to make me help me to calm myself process down and process it through. Mm. And I rely on him a lot. For mm -hmm. that to give me that that comfort that I need when I'm really struggling through the day. Um, another thing I've noticed, and I take it upon myself, is none of my children are morning people, and I mean absolutely none of them. So you know, my kids, it, I can wake them up at 5 a.m. 
we are still getting to school at eight o'clock because from 5 a.m. to eight o'clock, it's now I don't want to get dressed. I don't want to put on that. No, I don't want to wear that. No, I want my hair done, you know, and all these things going to into play. Mm -hmm. So all of October, y'all will love, I played, you know, spooky Halloween music to wake them up in the morning and they woke up laughing instead because it was like, I'm a gummy bear spooky music mm -hmm. and all the little fun, like so Michael that's Jackson what you did to, bring to, boost them. Okay, to boost and them and bring their morale love. So, cause I've realized that if I take the time to make them super happy in the morning, mom is super happy too. Cause okay. then they're not fighting amongst each other. Okay. 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 So what I do ladies to, um, project happiness from the inside out is acknowledge the unhappy moments. Mm. So for me, um, that's really big because I sometimes kind of like gloss over like my feelings when, like when, I, when I'm feeling sad or when I'm feeling a certain type of way, I kind of like mask it with laughing and you know being silly and being goofy and just kind mm -hmm. of, but acknowledging the fact that, Radhika hit on it earlier, there are unhappy moments that mm -hmm. occur. Mm -hmm. So you have to acknowledge those in order to deal with them, process mm -hmm. them, mm -hmm. and move on to actually being happy and dealing with the moments mm -hmm. where, like, oh my gosh, this is so much, oh my gosh, this is, you know, because if you suppress the unhappy moments, mm -hmm. then, or on, on the inside, by burying it, mm -hmm. which a lot of us kind of have that, um, like, like my family growing up, like we were stuffers, like. We don't talk about mm -hmm. the negative things that occur, which if you don't let them out, if you don't acknowledge them, then they become like cancers on the inside of you. So then how can you truly be happy without acknowledging the fact that there's unhappy, unpleasant things that happen that you have to deal with? Yeah, that's pretty big. I mean, because even though happiness is an inside job, if you haven't acknowledged, I mean, and by the way, I think there are two prongs to that, right? Because there's the daily habit of doing certain things to help you remain positive and happy as you get through your day. But then there is the idea of when you are going through things that are not the happiest, how do you rechannel the effort? Yeah. And so you have to first certainly you acknowledge them acknowledge, yeah. because then you can't deal with them. Yeah. And if you don't deal with them, we know what happens. And we right? know what, what happens. happens. You yeah. cannot deal Obviously, with them. everyone here has a certain routine yeah. mm -hmm. that puts them back into that zone where they feel they, they can cope. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if you don't, uh, there is actually studies have been down to, done that it takes about 30 days to, to develop, reset. to reset yeah. and develop a new routine. Mm -hmm. So if you if you feeling like you need something fresh, maybe something that you normally do doesn't, mm -hmm. uh, that's a good time to, you know, I actually watched uh, a speech, I think it was an Air Force colonel or something, it just it was a military guy just mm -hmm. randomly on YouTube, just. I don't know. Anyway, and he said that, and actually that you made me think of it, every morning make your bed. Mm, because if the rest of your day didn't go yeah. well and you accomplished nothing, yes. mm -hmm. when you, at the end of the day, you, you came know. home to the yeah. main bed. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I make my bed, so, my bed every single uh, yeah. morning. And, I do too. And, I can't go to And bed it's positive that. because mm -hmm. there is at least then one accomplishment, yes. as basic as it sounds, and it's mm -hmm. but it sets you into doing routines. It's actually a great tool for people who struggle with sleep. Mm -hmm. Set your routine in the evening. Mm -hmm. You know, do same things at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, routines are great. Absolutely. But that's great, yes. but it also leads me into other questions. Yes. Let's let's talk about other things that we do to cope, like reaching out to our girlfriends or mm -hmm. thinking about a specific person and maybe you think about what would they do. So Karee, tell me, like, is there a certain friend that you like to reach out to? Is there a certain person that you think uh, about when you're struggling with somebody? There's only one that... acceptable answer in this. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 hold on now. Hold on now. So the one acceptable answer is I call Big Dad. Oh. Uh, No. Mm -hmm. See, that's, that's why it's the acceptable answer because they don't know. <laughs> All of them don't know about Big Daddy. <laughs> See what I'm talking about here? So no, I'm speechless. I'm just I saying, am not a lot. I mean, you you know what? For me, I am an internalizer. 
So it, it's very surprising that you think that if I'm going through something that I would naturally reach out, I don't. Because the thing about me and my emotions is if I can't understand it, if I can't process it, if I can't verbalize it, it's kind of like letting a bunch of noise in yeah, exactly. and then I'm completely all over the yeah. place. So if there's something going on with me, I like to sit with it for a second and talk to myself a little bit, right? And, and that is certainly from childhood because I remember in childhood very much driving to school, just thinking to myself, but it allows me to go, my gosh, I'm feeling sad. Like I can acknowledge what this feeling Without is. Without like, yes, the interjection of, someone of somebody else, else putting yeah. that on you. Is yeah. it that I'm sad? Is it that I'm disappointed? Is it that I'm frustrated? Okay, now I know until so when I call the girls, it's like, listen, I'm feeling like shit today because I'm sad about this yes. thing because of this thing. Mm -hmm. And so it allows me to be able to really soak process. in. Yeah, and you yes. soak in you soak in all of that because if I'm able to tell you and clearly kind of pinpoint what's happening, then imagine your friends being able to much more effectively yes. talk to you mm -hmm. and kind of help you through be that. Able to relate yeah, through. absolutely. Absolutely. Lee, how would you answer this? Um, I call my hype girls, which would be, it would be you, or, and the hype girl, bless you. or you, um, yes, you are. whereas Kim is very much like, bitch, you got this, <laughs> and I agree, is you, you are much more, um, bitch, I need you to think about this. No, <laughs> you're much more intentional, and you're much more, um, Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Logical and yes, logical and analytical box. and very straightforward. Yeah, and um, so I, it gives me two varying opinions. Mm -hmm. Um, and for me, talking is a way to process my mm -hmm. feelings because I feel like personally, I just my brain is all over the place. Yeah. I've got things going everywhere and. I can't always put my finger on what exactly yeah. it is that I'm feeling. Mm. And sometimes sharing my situation with other people and then getting their take mm -hmm. on it helps me to pinpoint, okay, this is what I'm feeling and this is how I can get through it. Yeah. Um, but a very wise woman once told me that you have to sometimes sit in the hurt. Yes. And it's hard to do that. Girl, who told you that? This fantastic woman named Mo. Oh, and okay. whoever that is needs a round of applause. We're going to put it for her flowers. Wait, she 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 her flowers. I remember this conversation. Yes. And <laughs> it's hard to do because nobody wants to yeah. feel yes. pain. Yes. We want to avoid it. We want to push mm -hmm. past it. Yep. But you have to, to really to deal with it and then you can move past it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because it comes back to what she said though. If you don't process it or pinpoint what it is, how are you ever going to truly deal with it? Yeah. You can quasi deal with it or what was the word that you use? Um, you know, kind of like the faux deal with oh, it. No. Pseudo, uh, pseudo deal with pseudo, it, pseudo, right? Yeah. You could do that, but it's going to still exist. It's so still exist. Exist. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you have to allow yourself to grieve basically or yeah. whatever just to feel it and just put it behind it because sweeping it under the rug just is makes it worse. It's just going to be a stain that keeps coming back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. It just grows. Pretty cat? Reiterate the question. <laughs> 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 we get to it. We're talking about what, what do you do? Like who, who are you? Who are the people you reach out to? Who's somebody that you, you look for to help you get through things? <laughs> All right, so it's two processes. I'm definitely a self-talker, so. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, self. Okay, also, I do. <laughs> I do talk to like my sisters. They tend to kind of be that reasoning voice for me to help kind of mm -hmm. coach me or let me see things that I can't see because sometimes when you're in that emotion, it is blurred. So they allow me to kind of take the blinders off and kind of see the whole picture. So they help you to put one foot in front of you. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So for me, I am also a person who likes to talk to myself. I talk to myself all the time. And, um, <laughs> But one thing, one thing that I do, since we're talking about from the inside out, I pray a lot when I'm going through, um, um, you know, difficult moments where I need to kind of reset, you know, 
I tend to look to a higher power first mm -hmm. because I feel like that's where the answers are like most of the time like the divine answer that I need I'm going to get it not from the people around me mm -hmm. they're there for confirmation mm -hmm. of what I've already been mm -hmm. kind of you know given mm -hmm. um, and then I process that through myself you know mm -hmm. people think that I'm a very um, outgoing personable person I am and I can encourage others but when I need to, like sometimes you say, Monique, where did you go? I'm thinking. I mm -hmm. need to kind of like figure this out first mm -hmm. for myself from the inside. Mm -hmm. And then I can, like you said, mm -hmm. like get, um, get feedback mm -hmm. from whatever is going on mm -hmm. on the inside. So I am, I am a very, I can help other people and I am a great listener when it comes to, but for me, I need to kind of pull back a little bit. Mm -hmm in order to process whatever I'm feeling on the inside. Got it. I just, I, oh, go ahead. Well, I was gonna, so the, the last little bit I really want everybody to process and I'd kind of like to get everybody's feedback on it too. Before you go there, I've got something to throw in the pot. I would love to know. So we read the article about how happiness really, or the book by Sylvia, about how happiness starts inside. And I think one of the things that stood out for me is the whole gratitude thing. Mm -hmm. And I think it's something we jump over a whole lot. Because yes. when life gets in the way, F a gratitude, right? Like, yeah. you're just focused on the problem. How do I fix this yeah. problem? And you're not even looking at what are the good things that are coming out of this or have come out of this. I think that'll be a good segue to close. So if we could... Absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, that's exactly what I was getting to, was oh. the gratitude part. So oh, perfect. well, so, so my good. thing, though, is three things. Like, what are three good things about each of you that you would want to share when you look at your life and happiness. Okay, let's go, let's start with um, Lee. Let's let Lee answer this question first. So we're gonna quickly go around to three good things. Three good things that you focus on. Put me on the spot. The things that you focus on. If you're having a bad day, the three good things, okay. that, okay. Three good things okay. that always build three, you up. Three, no, gratitude. Let's, let's go with what Karee said. Three things that you can focus in on inside that helps you with gratitude. Okay. Oh, yeah. um, I am, all of my children are healthy yes. and everything else can be going to hell in a handbasket, but my kids are healthy. My husband and I are healthy Good. and we have a roof over our heads and we have food to eat. Amen. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Let's go. Absolutely. Lana? Three things that... Three things that help you focus on gratitude. Um, Consider Definitely yes. Uh, sorry, I, I just a little bit yeah, it's okay. was paraphrasing some things in my head, but uh, definitely well-being of my family. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, my personal relationship. Mm -hmm. um, just uh, well-being of my business. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because uh, everything in my world rides on these three things. So okay. I'm grateful mm -hmm. for them. Okay, great. Okay. Radika? My three things, um, definitely my health is one of those things, you know, you have to be happy, you wake up every day. Um, as well as the people that are in my life family because they are the thing that drives you. And then finally, just, I don't know, waking up, period. Oh, okay, Curry, mm -hmm. quickly, three. Uh, <laughs> okay, I will not like get Monique upset, okay? So I'm gonna go really fast. Three good things that um, allows me to remain grateful, I would say, first and foremost, waking up every day, being grateful for life. I think every day you get up, you get the chance to do something, whether it's doing something different, whether it's, um, you know, correcting, you know, a mistake you did the day before, but you get to chart something. So just being able to get up and being able to move your body. I mean, not everybody gets that, right? Um, I think the things that surround me, I like to surround myself with beautiful things, friends, family, oh. I mean, you know, people that pour beauty and joy and love into you, that's really important. So um, I think that's the second good thing. And the third good thing is, I would say, my mind. I think that the mind is a powerful thing, two ways, but I'm just going to leave it at the mind is a powerful thing. 
and being able to manifest or even have a mindset that can manifest the things you want in your life, just having that as a guide and a compass for me is a good thing that I'm grateful for, that I still have my mind and I still have those things to work on. Amen. Okay. Kim. Um, so my three things that I'm grateful for are basically standard like everybody else's, my relationship, my kids' health, the roof over my head. But I also, when we're doing things like this and we're looking at life and being happy and inside job, I actually try to look for something to be grateful for every single day mm -hmm. because a lot of the times my days don't go great. So I try to look for just at least one or two positive things in my day that I can be grateful for at the end of the day. And it may not always be the same thing. I mean, it could be as simple as they fed the dogs today. <laughs> Somebody let the dogs out today. They got fed today. That's one less thing off mom's list. Somebody switched out the laundry. I'm grateful for that today. So I try to find new things to be grateful for every single day to get through my days, especially when I'm really struggling with the rough day. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Well, so for me, it's, um, I was like, Kareem, why'd you take my answer? <laughs> um, but the one thing that I am the most grateful for is to be in my right mind because there's so many people yes. who have mental health issues yes. that um, are struggling with mm -hmm. so many so things so i do not take that for granted um of course um my family the love of the people who um who are around me and that goes beyond biological that goes beyond blood but it mm -hmm. goes you know to my extended family mm -hmm. and the people that i've chosen to mm -hmm. surround myself yes. with yes. um as well as just being able to provide for myself, being able to provide um, for my family. So those are the things. I mean, there's so many things, but if we're narrowing it, narrowing it down, I'm pretty sure later on I'm going to say, dang, I should have said this. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. it is but what it is. Are but great great yeah, those are three great things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So um, this was a very interesting conversation ladies as always um, we are so thankful that you have chosen to step in and just hear um, how we work on our happiness from the inside out from our perspective and hopefully we said something that's going to challenge you to maybe work on um, your inside out happiness this is unbalanced box <laughs> <laughs> conversations thank you for tuning in and joining us tonight and again we do stress that if you are struggling internally with internal things please reach out for help there are lots of outlets for you to get in touch with and people you can talk to to help you cope with your inner struggles thank you until next time bye, bye. y'all are a hot mess